Question 9 is a standard question on quadratics. Now, you might recognise the standard formula for a quadratic as ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, you can see that the formula they've given it to you here is just the same thing. Uh, essentially, it takes the same form, but obviously you've got a negative sign here and the order has been swapped around. The fact it's a negative sign gives us this upside down U shape instead of the characteristic U shape. Uh, but it's essentially um, a fairly straightforward question on quadratics. The first part, part A, it tells you to write down the equation of the axis of symmetry. Now, whenever a question tells you to write down, or the command word is write down, it means the question should be fairly straightforward and you shouldn't have to do much working out. Now we're told that this point here, point B, has coordinates 3, 6. So I know, therefore, that this line going down here goes through the point 3. So part A, what's the equation for the axis of symmetry? You have to write x equals 3. So you can see it's clearly going to go through 3. If you don't write x equals, if you just write 3, you'll only get one mark. For the second mark, you have to write it as an equation. So it has to be x equals Part B is a little bit harder. You're asked to find the value of B. So this value up here, the coefficient of x, you're asked to write that. Now, if we have a standard quadratic here, so here's our standard quadratic. The formula for the axis of symmetry is x equals minus b over 2a. Now, we know from part A that the equation for the line of symmetry is x equals 3. So we can substitute in here for x, we can say 3 equals minus b. We don't know what that is. We're trying to find b. 2a, remember a is the coefficient of x squared. The coefficient of x squared up here is negative 1. So this is going to be over 2 times negative 1. So we've got 3 equals minus b over, this is going to be negative 2. So if we multiply both sides by negative 2, we end up with negative 6 equals negative b. And therefore, we can deduce from that that b must be equal to 6. So uh, part c then asks us to write down the range of f of x. Now, remember domain and range. Domain is essentially the input values and ranges the output values. So if we have a look at this um, this function here, now we should recognize that this continues forever, down here to uh, negative infinity and up here to positive infinity. So you need to think then, what is the largest value, largest possible value that the, um, the y coordinate of any point here could possibly take? And you should be able to see fairly straightforwardly that the largest y coordinate is gonna occur at this point here. Nowhere on this curve will I find a y coordinate with a greater value than whatever we have here. Fortunately, we know the coordinates here. We know that the y coordinate at point B is 16. Therefore, the range y must be either less than or equal to 16. It cannot be more than 16. So the, ra the, the range will be y equals less than or equal to 16. And we can say that uh, y is an element of the real numbers because there are no restrictions on whether it's got to be uh, integers or um, anything else. So we can just say that uh, y is an element of the real numbers.